So can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. OK. So uh, sorry, we can see just uh, uh -huh. yeah, this page. And uh, full screen, please, if you can. OK, perfect. Uh, we see, sorry, we see yeah, notification. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah, now it should be perfect. Yep. Okay. A nice orange color. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, before I just you know start this uh, presentation, I would like to um, you know give a small uh, high level overview of what we are going to discuss, and then we'll talk about the agenda of this, uh, and then we'll jump into different slides, and then we have a nice demo for you guys to see uh, how we can feel a small hands on on, on using this uh, particular Apache Flink technology. So yeah, uh, on the streaming world of uh, when we say that uh, we have to do real time streaming, there have been different debates going on, uh, different companies, uh, uh, startups, they're working, um, you know, to match close to real time streaming uh, of different uh, data uh, source and ingestion, ingesting or uh, ingestion of those data and uh, enriching those data and then uh, parking the, that data uh, to different uh, data pipelines, uh, downstreams and different sinks. Uh, so I have been, you know, uh, I have worked um, on my, you know, experience when it comes to Spark uh, using Scala in some predictive modeling uh, projects. Uh, I also, you know, got opportunity to work with Apache Flink, which is also uh, one of the, you know, good streaming engine uh, when it comes compared uh, to the streaming world. So today uh, uh, we are about to, you know, discuss what is this Apache Flink and uh, what are the benefits of Apache Flinks, uh, how we can compare uh, these two, uh, you know, Apache Flink with other streaming technologies in the market. So yeah, let's go into that. Uh, so as you know that um, any slides, uh, the first part of this is we have to must know what 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 we are going to discuss as part of our presentation. So uh, if you can see uh, on this slide, we will be covering mostly all uh, here in this uh, in this presentation. So uh, we'll discuss about what is Apache Flink, key features of that, about architecture, uh, data processing modes. Uh, what different you know APIs that Apache Flink is giving us? Uh, any command line, uh, the deployment platforms that we can use uh, for for this Apache Flink, and some use cases, and then matrices uh, like comparison of throughput, latency, uh, uh, and then yeah, some demos. And lastly, we'll have your questions. So sounds good. Uh, let's move further. So. Um, as everyone knows, like a bit of history, Apache Flink. Uh, as everyone knows, Apache is an open source umbrella, and there exist many technologies under that umbrella. So Flink is one of that. Uh, uh, they started actually this quite a long time back, uh, and I know that there are many companies who are using this uh, uh, right now. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's something which I think should be enough to know. Uh, I mean, you can definitely go to uh, Apache Flink uh, you know, documentation, see different flavors, versions, which we have. Uh, so yeah, that's all about this. Uh, now we are going directly into this Apache Flink uh, ecosystem in short, right? So what is this architecture? Uh, not exactly architecture, but yeah, how this complete Apache Flink uh, in itself uh, providing an ecosystem. So what it can do, uh, what it is best suited for can be easily, you know, you can easily find out from here in this presentation. So uh, this is a very simplified version of a, you know diagram, which I would say would be easy to understand for anyone. So uh, to the left, you see here, there are different data sources. Uh, and most of these data sources are write heavy, meaning that uh, uh, data is coming very, with you know, very big, uh, I would say, uh, the right latency, uh, the right and the throughput of the data, the bandwidth of the data is too high on the, you know, on the source side. Uh, and if we have to handle such data, uh, then this is the technology that is the best, you know, uh, that can be taken as a, you know, one of the technology in the market. Uh, if you want to get the benefit, definitely, uh, you know, we have to compare the trade-offs uh, comparison to other tech, 
tech uh, technologies in the market like uh, spark streaming kafka streaming and many others which are uh, kind of in development and then there are some in research so yeah uh, so this is on a very high level ingesting some data real time events and then um, doing some enrichment uh, here and then again parking that uh, into the you know to the sinks like different um, uh, destination systems so you can use it for matrices, for dashboard, uh, whatever you feel like, elastic search, uh, put it on Grafana, you know, Kibana boards to see the real time, you know, D3 charts. Uh, so, you know, when I use this, we used to have it like, uh, I remember one of the project, uh, we were using Grafana Kibana again to display whatever we have prepared from the Apache Flink engine. Uh, yeah, and we have different source and, um, you know, downstream uh, systems where we are getting data and writing it through. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's on a very high level. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so this is actually a bit more in terms of details about uh, what is this real-time stream processing mean. So I, I hope like most of you, when we say uh, do a real-time stream processing, what should it signify? Uh, so uh, in the in the streaming world, uh, when you are saying you are doing a real time streaming, it simply means that you are matching uh, exactly the timestamp, the moment the data is you know ingested into the system, it should you know act on that data immediately and then uh, enrich or whatever operation you need to do and then send that data to the final system. So that's something which we are trying to say in terms of real time streaming. Uh, so I will come to a part later where we say that Apache Spark is, you know, one of the competitive, very popular in the market. Uh, why it's not real time or close to real time? Why Apache Flink is, you know, close to real time? We'll we'll talk that part in uh, in a bit. But yeah, uh, that's something. So Apache Flink features are, you know, many features it's giving us. Like batch processing is something that you also can support here. There are different API set. Fault tolerance, exactly one semantics. Uh, th these are the things which which comes in when let's say there is something which happens, uh, nodes failure or, or the cluster where you have deployed the Flink, uh, you know, uh, module, it, it, it's broken down. In that case, how we are going to say that, okay, the message which was sent uh, from the source system, uh, are we sure that it is going to be received only once? There should not be any duplicacy. So all these things, uh, pretty handy and pretty configurable in Apache Flink. Uh, event time processing is something which Apache Flink always, you know, considered. So uh, whenever the source system generate an event, it 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 just you know add that uh, time uh, event time, and then using watermarks and other stuffs in Apache Flink, we can process that event natively, uh, close to native. You know, I would say underlying, uh, you know. Um, core libraries, uh, uh, event time processing, so that the arrival and the order the data is coming in, it's it's matching to what is expected in the output. High throughput and low latency. This is you know a general. Um, I would say um, one of the reason why we say and we are discussing about Apache Flink. We'll discuss that in different matrices. Uh, stateful processing, when whenever we say stateful, it simply signifies that, okay, whenever in terms of any failure, are we maintaining any states? Let's say we are, you know, rolling or giving a new uh, deployment, or let's say some updates are going on, how we are going to maintain the current state of the, you know, the real time streaming engine. So it has a good support on that rich set of APIs, scalability, high availability. I think this is a very common standard and uh, convention who are coming from the you know architecture side uh, that all these systems they should be highly available scalable fault tolerance and all that uh, and a good community as well uh, so let's go to the next one so now we'll focus mostly on these two part which i think are quite common nowadays uh, when it comes to stream processing and batch processing so over here if you see in the diagram right so uh, real time events so this is the source where the events uh, are tagged with some time, the moment they are being generated, then they are ingested into the streaming engine, which we call Apache Flink. Uh, and then they map to, you know, the downstream uh, sinks. We, like we call sync, we can call it data stores, or we can call it 
downstream data pipelines where we are kind of writing that final output of this uh, engine and then giving you know back it to the dashboard you know uis so that they can render it yeah sorry i i heard someone ask something i i, I think it's a mistake okay okay <laughs> no problem yeah so uh, so that was uh, you know streaming um, We'll go uh, more into this part um, uh, later. But yeah, this is on a very high level what we are doing. And over here, you see this continuous query application. So this is something where you can see uh, this is Apache Flink, you know, the complete engine uh, having state and doing different kind of optima, uh, you know, um, queries. There are different patterns that you can apply, grouping. Uh, computing different complex aggregations uh, and yeah, many, many other flavors that are given as part of the, you know, different rich APIs of streaming engine. Uh, when it comes to batch processing, it's very common that whenever you are saying batch processing, you need to provide uh, some data inputs in terms of some batches, some window chunks. So it's quite handy uh, to work in that way also. Uh, so the good part of uh, Apache Flink here is like the source and uh, the downstream syncs. Uh, they are, you know, the, the support of Apache Flink is quite, I would say, immersive because uh, you can write to big data world, you can write to relational database world, you can write to uh, Elastic Engine, some Lucerian flavors of the database. Uh, uh, you can write to any AWS, you know, um, data store. So all this is in the same way is like the source system can be anything. Uh, uh, so we'll see one example in, in one of the common, uh, you know, demo that I'll share with you uh, in, a, in a bit. Uh, so yeah, but that's on a very high level about these streaming and batch processing. Uh, yeah, so now architecture. So this is very important part. Uh, if someone would like to go deep into this, like how Apache Flink and what it is working uh, on cluster, how will it behave? Uh, how it's going to take load and things like that, and how we can configure. So these are the main components over here when it comes to Apache Flink engine. So as uh, like we have task managers, which are responsible to do the real work for whatever they get. And this is the job manager whose responsibility is to delegate uh, the different work which is coming in to all the task managers. Uh, when it comes to configuration part of this, like uh, whenever you download this library, either by Docker or you know a standalone jar or on or on on, on your Windows or Mac machines, uh, those things are easily configurable. You can define as many task managers as you want based on your uh, you know runtime uh, configurations of your machine. For example, CPU uh, cores uh, and uh, uh, the technology that you're using, for example, Kafka you're using, then what is the architecture and the, uh, those, um, those uh, I would say, network, uh, CPU, partitions that you configured for a topic. Uh, so those decisions, like how many task managers you want, you can take on, you know, on, on that basis. So, uh, yeah, but the point here is simple that you can define your cluster in a way you want that matches to your requirement. Uh, considering the trade-off, whatever technologies you are using on the source side and the downstream side for writing those final outputs. Uh, so yeah, uh, in short, you see here Flink program, whenever you submit anything here, the code to perform that enrichment or computation or anything related to complex processing of that event, uh, it just generate a graph. We call it like data flow graph. And then uh, that particular, you know, uh, that particular complete graph, which takes that program uh, in as an input and then delegate it to job manager. And the responsibility of job manager is to delegate that uh, complex piece of program uh, to the different tasks managers, because one program might have different stages like, you are doing grouping in one step and then aggregating in another step and then you know writing into the other downstream system in other steps so that can be scattered across different task managers and that can achieve you know a kind of parallelism uh, working things in parallel at the same time 
based on your CPU cores, as I said, which is an important configuration um, part and the decision maker, how many task managers you need uh, and things like that. Uh, it is supported, you know, you see here, you can have different flavors of Flink ecosystem, Yarn, Docker, Windows, Mac, everywhere you can install it, you can launch a cluster and you can execute as a standalone uh, application also on local, you can play with a single job manager and single task manager as well. Uh, yeah, so that's something on a very high level. Uh, uh, checkpointing is something which is connected to the fault tolerance world where we are uh, where we are seeing that every time, every single time, based on our configurations, if we are saying, like say, after every five seconds, the complete flink state should get a checkpoint and the state of that you know complete engine should be saved in some uh, some you know persistent uh, data store uh, we can configure that point as well over here so snapshots can be taken based on your needs your trade offs right of your system uh, so that any fault tolerance or anything goes wrong with your you know deployment or anything something like that you can always have your system in a pretty good or you know state and you can I would say replay those events without any problems. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much, um, I would say all, uh, I mean, that is a topic that can go much deep into that, but I would say you can ask me any questions later if you want, uh, you want to go much deeper into these uh, different uh, memory level, uh, operating system level stuff uh, and things like that. Uh, yeah, let me take you to the next slide, uh, which is very, you know, very well connected to kind of streaming APIs, uh, which I said, like we have mostly two uh, common usage, like where we say streaming APIs and batch APIs. So when it comes to streaming APIs, these are the, you know, common operations that we can do uh, with the streaming world. So over here you see different operations are provided. Like you can do the windowing, map, filter, flat map, key by, uh, in terms of windowing also, we have different windows concept here. You can have tumbling windows, sliding windows, session windows. Uh, not sure if anyone has some, you know, done some work in the power, you know, streaming world, but these are the common uh, data structures that we see and we talk about when we talk about streaming. Uh, when, I mean, specifically for windows. So uh, time semantics, as I said, they play a very crucial role, making it a real time, close to real time streaming engine. So event time, processing time, ingestion times. So the event time is the time when the, you know, which is coming from, from the source system and processing time when it is processing the data. Ingestion time is the time when the event get ingested into the system. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's simple and clear. I would say um, stateful processing uh, allows um, maintaining, as I said, uh, taking different snapshots based on checkpointing that you have configured uh and uh, storing that into some persistent store uh to handle some failure or network failure or deployment issues in case uh watermarks uh, uh they, they are used in event time processing to indicate for example uh let's say you know a source system is generating the data let's say there is an iot data generator it can be anything let's say you know a machine uh, a blood pressure machine which is there in the hospital right generating your uh, blood or pulse rates quite frequently and then uh, you want to do something and then let's say the machine stops and then again uh, it started you know sending some data uh, so in that case uh, if you want to play with the ordering uh, and do some you know customization in the ordering of the data like what was the old data what is the new data is there any you know mismatch in the order it should come or not so there we can play with the watermarks here uh, we can define some rules wherein we let's say okay so if this particular data set is coming after this timestamp okay we are going to handle it this in this way uh, and yeah based on different watermarks we can take you know handle those events accordingly uh, key streams are nothing um, they are mostly common like when whenever we getting an event we can key that event with some special keys so that we can perform on a very high grouping level that, okay, let's say, uh, for example, let's say key one, okay, is assigned to some set of data and key two is assigned to some another set of data. And then we, uh, and then based on different keys, which we have tagged for, let's say, uh, T1, 
T1 timestamp T1 to timestamp T2, all the events are tagged as key one and uh, timestamp T3 to timestamp T4, all the events are tagged as key two. So if we are doing like this, then what we are saying that in real streaming, we are creating another keyed streaming and then we can segregate our keyed streaming based on our different needs, right? So this is something also possible. Uh, it's a kind of, you know, grouping your stream into sub streams based on some tagging, right? Fault tolerance, event time processing, connectors, we'll see later, like what are the connectors available? Okay, so this is a very small, simple snippet uh, when it comes to Java uh, world. I'm sure most of us using Java here, uh, but yeah, uh, as I said, it's a very good, um, there is a good support with Scala as well. If you have done some work on Scala, then you can definitely use that as well. Uh, it's not only specific with Java. So Flink uh, APIs or Flink jars, they are available with different uh, technologies. So this is the example where we have uh, word count streaming. So over here, uh, you see here, whenever we want to do something when it comes to streaming, we have to use stream execution environment. And then uh, we can choose here, uh, get execution environment. And there are different flavors uh, here. There we can pass uh, parallelism of the data we want to read. Uh, and then you can set here, let's say how many, you know, uh, threads you want to read that data in your streaming world. So that number of threads that can connect to your source system. So I'll explain you one example also in a demo, uh, what, what I'm trying to say here about parallelism and how to create threads here. Uh, but yeah, this is a small snippet. We are creating the execution environment. Then this part is kind of getting the data. It can be input read file. It can, it can be any big data platform. It can be any real time uh, messaging queue. Uh, it can be any relational database. You know, any source is, is, is okay. You can read the data from there. And then here is the real part where we are doing the real streaming. So this is the part where we are just, you know, splitting our file based on the lines and then key buying by word and then counting it, you know, how many words uh, that particular file for every, uh, you know, file contains. So uh, if you see here, we, we can write our own wrapper here for different flat map operation. So this particular flat map is just, you know, uh, reading, uh, like converting that file line by line. And then uh, you are kind of reading all the words which are there in particular line and then finalizing it for the sum, you know, uh, this, this operator. And then at the late last, you can get the, you know, word count. Uh, for 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 your key base, like whatever word you have, you can get the count of that. So yeah, this is one of simple usage. Uh, when it comes to batch API, uh, there is a small difference. Like data stream is something which is for streaming. Data set is something for data uh, for batch. Uh, and all other things which you he see here, more or less common uh, that you can perform even with the batch APIs. Uh, when you see sinks, as I said, sinks are nothing, but they are the final destination systems where you are going to write that data, right? Uh, partitioning is something which is quite common standard term uh, in, in you know, all our horizontally scalable systems. So for example, Cassandra, if you talk about, or let's say you talk about Kafka and things like that. So we are talking always about partitions, right? So this is also something configurable here. You can configure your partitioning uh, for, for, for these operations. Uh, yeah, so I'll not again repeat all those things again because this is more or less common operations that you would like to go uh, do with uh, with the batch. It's just like these are the batch APIs where you're sending a bulk or chunk of data rather than real streamings. Okay, so when it comes to batch API, this, this piece of uh, work, um, so yeah, there you see the only difference is here we are using data set because this time we are saying the batch. Uh, and uh, we have to perform, you know, more or less all the things are same, but we have to look forward, like what API do we need to use for my batch? Uh, yeah, so now coming to the fault tolerance, which I was talking, you know, a bit in my previous slides as well. So batch, uh, I mean, fault tolerance in this Flink word is quite, uh, I would say, be, like very happy uh, to say that 
they have very good configurations for this. You can create different checkpoints, which can take periodically snapshots for whatever the states your Kafka, I mean, uh, this Flink engine is. And then uh, you can save those snapshots in whatever database you feel like. Like, for example, you can use DrogDB and other backend you know, uh, databases in order to save the state of your uh, data. Uh, so all these things, I think I pretty much explained you already in brief previous slides about fault tolerance, how we are doing checkpointing. Uh, uh, those things are quite configurable. You can reach uh, like reach out to me if you have any questions later that how to configure these checkpoints uh, in our you know uh, in our program, uh, how we can store those things, um, uh, and yeah, and anything connected to that. So. This is on a very high level, like saving the state of Apache Flink engine to different snapshots uh, so that any time any failure happen, then we can restore the Flink engine again from the saved state. Uh, those states we are calling checkpoints. Okay. And the checkpoint is also, you know, the technical term in Flink when we are saying that we want to do fault tolerance. So not to be confused. Yeah, here uh, it's exactly in sync with, uh, with what APIs we, we get from Apache Flink. Okay, so uh, benefits here uh, and the key components. So as I said, like key components, which are very important, state backend, we are saving the state of our Flink engine, stateful operators, right? So they are different. Uh, when we say we are saving the state, uh, so uh, at the same time, we should talk also about the operators, like those different operators, map, flat map, all the grouping and computation operators. So uh, we can also save the state of those operators. Checkpointing is again using the state backend and giving us opportunity to, to do the fault tolerance. Uh, and these are the benefits here. Um, deduplication is something uh, where we can handle the duplicacy exactly one semantics right, and how to handle that, uh, at least uh, once, exactly once, and all these things are configurable here. Uh, aggregation over time, we have different window operation, then we have join operation. So these are, are all the benefits that we have here with the state pool processing in Flink. Uh, yeah, so let me go to uh, the connectors that are available on a very high level. So you see here, mostly all flavors, you know, are available here from where you can connect, you can write. So yeah, you can create your own connectors also. As I said, Flink is coming to give an opportunity to create your own you know, new connector, whichever downstream system or source system you want. So I remember when I was working on this Flink quite a long time back uh, and recently also, but my first project on Flink, there was no JDBC connector that time. Uh, I mean, uh, of course, like that, um, you know, community was doing a lot of work on that side, but there was no JDBC connector. So remember, uh, I used, uh, I, I created my own JDBC connector using the native APIs, which are exposed always with Flink. So the simple idea is here, like you should, you should see here most of, you know, optimized versions of these connectors. So if you want to use, you know, uh, you have your use case wherein these texts are coming in, uh, go and feel free to use what they already made. But let's say there's a requirement you, would, you don't have any connector. You can write your own connectors. You can write your own sync, right? So you are free to do that because all the native APIs are already exposed. So that is a good part. Uh, okay, so I think these are the technologies. I should not go deep into that because they are different technologies, but on a very high level, these are the connectors you can connect uh, source and downstream, right? Sync means like we are writing into this. Source means we are consuming the data from where, okay? Okay, so uh, use cases of Flink, I think by now you must know what are the use cases. Uh, Real-time data processing and batch data processing. Uh, Real-time means like all these things like IoT, streaming data, uh, continuous data, which is coming from some data-driven applications. Uh, and you have a requirement of, let's say, to, to populate a dashboard, which should give you a real time, let's say, you know, graphs, live charts uh, from your either, you know, any um, matrices of an application, monitoring of an application with those real time, you know, uh, memory, network, bandwidth, throughput, latency, uh, 
CPU usage and all that. You can do all that, right? With this, with this all APIs. Uh, on batch side, you can do generate batch reports, uh, doing some of the, uh, I'm sure like most of you might have some idea about those ETL tools, which are quite popular in the market. Uh, but yeah, we can do those stuffs as well uh, here because with Flink, you can do what ETL is doing, right? You can create your own, uh, whatever you know you want in terms of extracting data, enriching that data, loading it, and then writing it to the final system and then having that dashboard, fancy dashboard to do the analytics, right? So yeah, all that is coming is as part of use cases. Uh, you can do that. Um, also one of the batch data processing, uh, you know, best example can be, let's say, uh, you are, you know, working for a client, which is health insurance client, and you need to kind of, uh, create some predictive model, uh, for let's say, let's say a use case wherein let's say a customer who is a heart patient and kind of taking some medica medication for last 15 years on heart, uh, different medications he can take different pills he can take. Uh, so if you are, you know, having the history uh, of those medicines for that customer for last 10 years, you must have a big data and then you can create a predictive model, uh, you know, taking that 10 year of data for, for different patient and then create a predictive model. Like what is the probability of having XYZ disease in this person if he's taking this medicine for last 10 years, right? So maybe the chances of having kidney failures or uh, you know, a chronic disease in kidney because of he's taking a medicine on heart for last 10 years uh, is something that you can train your model. So batch data processing is something which comes in. You can use Flink for sure here as well. So yeah, on big data world, on, you know, on, on different uh, data world where we are kind of training different models, this is something I would say good to use that. Okay, so let's go to some numbers, right? Because these are very important things when we are talking about Whatever we are talking, if there are no numbers to prove, it means we are talking uh, like only the theoretical part, but yeah, we do not have any numbers which can prove our uh, thesis or our theoretical knowledge. So these are the numbers. I provided you some research link as well in my you know last uh, piece of the slide where you can go and check. So you see here from the latency point of view, right? Spark and Flink, Spark is quite popular and Flink here as well. Uh, getting the popularity, as, as I said. So you can see, uh, you know, uh, the latency and how the graph, you know, working. So the latency is very less, right? And if you see the spark, it's very high. So yeah, that's one example you can see when you play with that data and you would like to come forward with the matrices that how much you can get in terms of latency, meaning close to real time, how much you can get in terms of the bandwidth throughput that you are putting into the system, right? Either from the consumer side, or you're consuming something or you are writing to some system. Like for example, let's say Cassandra write heavy application, right? So how much data you are putting in, how you know fast that data uh, you know, can be written and can be processed. Uh, this is the next slide where we're talking about throughput, as I said. So you see here throughput is also very, you know, comparatively very higher in case of Flink. Uh, yeah, so these links are there. You can directly read a lot of things there about this. And there are many pages. If you go and do a quick search on Google, you'll find out like, okay, where this Pache Flink can help you a lot, right? You can check, uh, you know, free to use uh, and uh, that what are the different companies, right? The, at this moment of time using Apache Flink on their production, you know, word. So, so, sorry, Pankaj, what, what does, was the Q1, Q11? stands for what, what what does it mean this q1 to q11 so uh, yeah so i would say it's it's a kind of data set they have prepared when i was you know copy pasting this uh, this uh, th this diagram from this side so they were kind of you know uh, q1 is the let's say one piece of data and they put the load and then they, they try to find out so this is these are the iterations you can say right they they played with different iterations and in mostly all the iterations which they have done they came out with this result Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to the demo part. Okay. I'll try to be quick uh, over here. So I think I have something already ready with me. Let me switch to the project because I was. So yeah, this is one of the example where I'm just using Java library. Okay. 
to to do some operations here so you see here this is one of the project wherein i said like i have mostly doing the same thing which i have shared in this you know uh, the slide uh, but the thing is over here i'm consuming something from kafka okay uh, so that's why i have given here some properties of kafka like what is my group id and then this is the name of the topic okay and then uh, i'm streaming that and kind of you know uh, doing some operation like okay every 5000 i want to get the count of you know the words uh, every 5000 milliseconds uh, this is my time window i want to get the count of you know the words that i'm writing in so let me see if my terminal is already on or not with the yeah, this is linked yeah so uh, yeah so maybe uh, for some of you who might not know how to what is kafka here so kafka is one of the messaging you know open source platform uh, which is quite rich in uh, like for example you can uh, point to point or publish subscribe so uh, when we say uh, in kafka what we call it topics okay every topic can have different replication factors uh, you can create partitions for a topic so there is a good documentation on this uh, i would say in short uh, what needs to be done you need to go to you know google and then download kafka for windows mac whatever it is and then it's very simple let me close this here so let's say uh, i'm here in this kafka okay and if i just do ls you see here this is uh, what i have got into the you know my kafka uh, you know the uh, the artifact that i downloaded from from the platform right uh and then what we have to do we have to start uh we, we have to do some some things definitely so for example we have to uh create a consumer we have to uh create a producer based on whatever needed and then we have to start that kafka you know engine as well uh so and also we have to create a topic in kafka right so that is also something very important i can share that all information let's say uh you know in my email after the presentation that how can how can you create you know a particular topic uh and some of the links which you can use uh for uh for kafka uh to create topic to create producers to create consumers and things like that so yeah so let's say i am in this kafka and now you see here i'm using kafka server start.sh and then config server properties uh, so that's why I said, like, I do not want to go deep into this Kafka right now. So on a very high level configurations are something where you configure, like, how many, uh, you know, when we say Kafka, like, start the cluster of Kafka, then you also have, like, your zookeeper working, which is going to deal with, like, how many uh, task managers you are going to work with. So all this, these things are configurable, right, over here. So I'm just starting the cluster. Over here, uh, I'm starting a zookeeper, okay? Um, let me close it and open it one more time. Okay. Two dot one two is not relying on this, so you can start your server and Zookeeper at the same time. I mean, it is not important to have an order like which one first. Yeah, something seriously long you started during. Yeah, so let's let's go to the Flink part because um, um, I can definitely show you something uh, where we can submit a job. So this is the Java uh, part. So in short, like I can explain you. Uh, uh, let me open the flink. Okay, I'll come to this part later. So, 
So when it comes to Flink, uh, I also had this Flink over here. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is layer here is to start the flink. Uh, I mean, I downloaded the flink the way uh, it's simple. Like you, if you go to uh, Apache flink uh, dot org, there you can download uh, your compatible, uh, you know, operating system level like. Uh, Mac, uh, you can use also Docker to download this. I also have Docker Dockerized version of this Flink in my machine. So if you have, uh, I mean, yeah. So I I would like to show you demo based on what I have in my as a you know as an artifact which I downloaded directly from the uh, for the Mac. So over here, uh, let me start this uh, Flink engine. Yeah, so on local, you can start this as start cluster.sh. So there you have all the configurations about, I mean, if you go and check this conf folder, you will have all the uh, config about how many task managers you want uh, uh, for your job manager to run in. So right now this is all started. And now if I go to, uh, let me scroll it down. Here, this is one of the dashboard that is launched on my local, uh, which has uh, no running job, no completed job, right? And then we have task managers here. Then we have uh, job manager. So overview is something where you can see how many task managers are running in there, two task managers. Uh, so now we are going to see a demo where we will, you know, submit a job to this cluster and then we'll see how it, this dashboard will look like. Uh, so when we say we are going to submit a job, let me open one more terminal. Okay, so now I should have that uh, with me already because I. Yeah, so this is the command to create a Kafka topic. Yeah, I'm not sure why it is not working. Maybe I need to restart something. But yeah, I created the Kafka topic uh, simply by using, you know, Kafka topic command. Uh, okay, let me check. I already have a handy command which I can use to push. Yeah, so. So, yeah, this is one. So, what I'm saying to Flink cluster that run my uh, this jar. This jar is nothing but a program which is which can be written in 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 Java and Scala, similar to this. Okay. Uh, so let's say you you created your whole you know library uh, of Flink and you have written all you know your computing and uh, aggregation operation enrichment, writing it to the Cassandra. Let's say for example and reading it from Kafka and whatever, right? And you created a jar out of it and then you use that jar over here and you can push that chart to Flink cluster, right? Uh, so over here, I'm reading it something from, you know, input file and then writing, because this is a very, very common example uh, to understand. And then you will see here. So the moment I just enter this, it, the job has been submitted. And now if I refresh this page, so you see here, we got one job. And you see here, whatever we are, we are, you know, doing right now, this job is finished, by the way. So whatever we are doing here, it is, it is showing me all the stages, uh, what operations we have performed, 
we can see start time end time the duration it this particular you know uh, operator took and then uh, all other things which are responsible as i said if you, if you have used watermarks or something like that uh, task manager uh, how many you know how much data it has consumed uh, and then many other more details which are quite easy to you know see here did we have any checkpoint or not we have not done any checkpointing so it's it's just showing us zero results here uh, and now uh, if you remember like when i submitted this job uh, i was expecting an output to an output file so let me check because the output file was into the fling folder so let me go to the fling folder it's here today's um, okay this is one and yeah so this is the file that we got and if i open this output you see here so we got this output which was there in that output file like i put some random you know numbers here so five milliseconds it created you know uh, i mean it, it just generated not five milliseconds sorry i was confused with my example so this word word count example just you kind know of counted the number of words so hello one my is one name is one so all these the the count for for different words so uh yeah so that's pretty much all uh for for this demo uh on flink side as i said i already have configured my docker here i'll be sharing all those commands with you with you that you can use to to because this time whatever i'm doing right now you see it very clearly i'm i downloaded flink on my machine and then running the cluster uh, you can do the same job on your Docker container as well, right? And then you can go uh, do a SH to the container that you're running the Fling, and then you can start your cluster there. You can submit job on your Docker as well. So it's quite handy. Uh, regarding Kafka and the example, uh, I do not want to, you know, spend time because this is quite very, I don't know, uh, it's very weird why it's not working, but I would say, um, running a kafka and then creating a topic okay uh so what it this code will do actually so when you have your uh, kafka you know zookeeper running uh, and you got your test topic let's say in that and then you let's say there is some service right which is responsible to write into the kafka right so this particular program or my this particular you know uh, library which i will put to the fling it will read that kafka topic infinitely okay and then it will do some operation what this operation i was doing it was like every 500 uh, 5000 milliseconds i need to count you know how many words uh, that kafka is writing so that count will be printed right so that's what it's supposed to do this program is supposed to do uh, maybe what i'll do uh, yeah I'll create a small loom video after I restart my machine. Something seriously weird because it was working yesterday. I, th I think it's fine. I think it's fine. I mean, at least uh, in my opinion, we can imagine, you know, yeah, yeah. how that so, works. I mean, don't yeah. don't don't waste your kind of time if I may propose yeah, so something. Yeah, and let me go back to one of the more uh, also one of the good part, which is kind of like we have covered almost all part here. Kafka window, which is you see in my code web console uh docker word count demo and then there is this sql client right so whatever we are doing with this java scala creating a you know uh, deploying it onto the cluster uh dockerizing it in a container uh, uh we can also do the same thing with sql client right and what does it mean it means that flink has provided a client where you can write a kind of SQL semantics SQL query and you can tell the SQL engine film SQL engine hey read it this Kafka topic and these are the you know boot servers these are the configurations of this topic read it read this topic and generate us the live data and perform these computations right so for example I will try to show you a very basic uh, example and it can go to very complex level you can read a cassandra also in the as part of sql client right you just need to provide the configurations for the source and then write your query just be below that and then it will generate the real time you know uh, the output that 
kind of being generated in the Java as well, right? So, uh, okay, let me be very quick here. Uh, Flink SQL client, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's here. So I created this. Okay, uh, this is very simple to start. Now you see you are on Flink SQL client, okay? Over here, you can, for example, let's say what I'm doing right now, select name count star as CNT. It's a very basic standard, you know, SQL query. And then from here, it signifies I'm giving some hard coded values, right? So this is a very simple query where I want count group by name, okay? Similarly, in the from clause, what you can do, you can write the configuration of a Kafka topic, right? You can write a configuration of, a, let's say, a, uh, a JDBC data source, let's say a relational Oracle database. You can write, read it from, uh, you know, from any source system you want. Uh, and then you can run whatever complex computations you want to get. Like you can perform here windowing, you can perform here uh, grouping, you can perform here simple select uh, and many flavors, right? That you can read as part of the documentation. So uh, if I just press enter here, <clears throat> so, yeah, so you see, this is the screen we got. And now this screen will be there, you know, forever until your machine is not off or your server is not dying. And it is generating the output like this, right? So when it, when it is Kafka, you will see the real, you know, numbers coming in or updating in. Uh, so because Kafka is something you, which you get continuous stream of data. So there you will, you will get a, you know, nice idea about, so let's say, what is the purpose of SQL client? So the purpose of SQL client, let's say before you push your deployment or let's say your, your library to production, you want to do some, you want to validate your you know, changes that you're doing into the code. You can use this SQL client, of course, to see what other live results that you can get. You can park those right live results into some uh, you know, data uh, pipelines, like let's say some static uh, text files or some reports. And this SQL client is quite handy. You can give it to management, right? Because uh, these SQLs are not very technical. At least some basic SQLs can be given to the management, right? They can use it uh, and then, then they can see the output, right? What is the output? And then when, let's say you get a sign off, okay, everything is good from the you know business and leadership point of view, stakeholders are happy. You write the code and then boom, deploy it to the uh, production environment. And yeah, this is what also I had thought to cover it here. And I think, yeah, that's all uh, as part of Flink. I think I covered almost all. Uh, let me check if I have anything pending. No, it's the question's time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, guys, if uh, how, uh, someone has question, please unmute and ask or use chat. Uh, hi, I have uh, one question. So in... Uh... Under Apache, we have quite a lot of projects like uh, Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, and we also have uh, Kafka Streams. So my question is uh, Apache Flink kind of a substitution for some of those technology or is it supposed to be used with uh, other technologies, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, kind of Apache ecosystem, where uh, does it stand? Yeah, so uh, I mean, as I said in the beginning of my part, uh, previous slide said, uh, when we talk about streaming, okay, different technologies are doing streaming for sure. But uh, when I see the differences, right, you can of course get the differences like Apache Spark versus Apache Flink versus Kafka Streams, right, and how they are different. So uh, Apache Spark and Apache uh, Apache Flink, they are different for sure. Apache Flink and Kafka Streams, they have like Kafka Streams they kind of, you know, giving more or less similar functionalities uh, as Apache Flink, right? Uh, because that is the reason why this Kafka Stream project was started. But as I said, Kafka Streams is only for streaming, but Apache Flink is batch as well as streaming and many other, you know, rich set of native APIs, which you can use to create your own source and, uh, you know, sync and data pipelines, right, for example. But Kafka Stream is something which you can use only for Kafka, right? So Apache Flink is generalized 
to be used for whatever source, whatever downstream, you know, uh, things you want. Uh, so that is the big difference between Kafka streams and Apache Flink. And now coming to Spark and Kafka uh, Apache Flink. So uh, the main difference I already shown you into the in terms of those matrices, right? In, as part of my slide. But technically, if you ask me in the architecture, uh, from the architecture's point of view, Apache Flink actually is not doing any micro batching, right? Apache Spark, when they say they are doing real-time streaming, they are still doing micro batching in their real streaming world. They are not processing an event, you know, bases the timing of that event, which is the key identifier for the real-time real streaming. But Apache Flink, they are not doing any micro batching concept. They are kind of doing, uh, you know, they are playing with those timestamps, right? The real timestamps and then ingesting those events and then playing with those different flavors like watermarks uh, for delayed events or out of order events and things like that. So as I said, like all these things depends on your trade-off, your need of the application, right? So if you ask me, if you really want to get the close time real streaming, I would say with all the matrices I see from different research and publishing platform, I would say Apache Flink is really doing very fantastic job here in terms of latency and throughput because it's not doing micro batching. It's, it's a totally a different architecture. Apache Spark was written quite a long time back, right? And it has got very big community. That time when the Apache Spark was written, the, the architecture, it was not compatible. Even though they decided to optimize something, they cannot change the whole architecture. And that's why they are still stick to the micro batching concept, even for the real time streaming. But Apache Flink, the architecture itself was invented in a way so that we are very close to real time, right? Because we are using the event timing concept here, not the micro batching concept. I hope I answered your question, right? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so we're a bit out of time, maybe uh, one more question and... Uh... Sorry about Flink uh, versus Spark community. Um... Yeah, because I, I heard I heard actually that if you go to go with Flink, you you do want to face at some point unresolved problems, missing things or whatever. You, you name it, and you 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 have to you know fall back to yourself for some solutions. But it seems in Spark, it's a more mature uh, community. So how how would you how would you consider you know? Choosing between those two, considering on the community kind of you know support and uh, yeah I don't know coverage in 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 you know on the internet. So yeah, is so there is, is there any big difference or? Yeah, so you're right. Like community, of course, uh, we cannot deny on this fact because Spark was as you as everybody knows, right? It's a quite old and very. Uh, I mean, it's quite old. Got its age. Uh, and a very big community comparatively with the Apache Flink. Uh, yeah, but um, when it comes to usage and uh, different application scenarios, uh, I mean, it depends on, you know, what you need, your application need. Uh, and uh, uh, I would say, um, yeah, that is something that has to be taken in consideration. Uh, if you are going to be very, very mission critical application, right? And you think that, if let's say my application uh, is very mission critical and uh, it cannot you know wait for example let's say there is something wrong and you are waiting for because the community is not too strong uh, still those you know people are working and there are many open source collaborators like i myself also collaborated a bit in apache flink uh, quite a long time back uh, so uh, yeah as I said, this all depends on, on the criticality of your application. Uh, if it is very close to mission critical, uh, you need to decide the trade-off, like uh, what is best, where you can get the best, uh, you know, out of Apache Flink and Apache Spark world. Uh, but if it is something uh, which is, let's say matrices, right? Uh, or any, any, system, uh, any application wherein you say, uh, let's say a small uh, availability or um, issues like this, can be, you know, uh, it should not be a big problem. Uh, and you need really a very good latency. We want to see, you know, really very high throughput. Uh, you should go ahead, ahead with that. So, yeah, so that, that would be my opinion. <laughs>